finally, we got some interesting news regarding Alexis Sanchez and Man United. Alexis Sanchez, of course, was um, had a very troubling experience at United. He didn't really do well. Um, that's basically safe to say without kind of, you know, coming out and saying anything weird. It wasn't a good time for him at the club. And yeah, he's just basically essentially broken down everything. Well, not broken down. He went on Instagram Live the other day and sort of uh, broke down what happened and told his side of the story, which I think is fair. Um, I think that timing is weird, but of course maybe it makes sense because he's officially um, not a Man United player anymore. He's officially signed to Inter Milan, so that probably was a time for him to kind of, you know, let go and sort of like get something off his chest, exercise some demons. And um, his account of things kind of makes sense to me. And if anything, it kind of is embarrassing to the club and also another indication as to why we shouldn't believe everything the club puts out, especially the stuff that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, because he's a bit of a company man in that regard. But this is a this is a quote that I read for you here regarding him. He's basically a rough translation of what Alexis Sanchez said. He says the following, he says, um, before going there, I had an agreement with Man City, but it didn't pan out and I got the chance to go to United. It was something nice for me. As a child, I liked the club a lot. I ended up signing without informing myself about what was going on behind the scenes. And there was things that you didn't realize until you got there, which is, again, he came at probably one of the worst times at United, right? We're going for a really turbulent period. Um, Mourinho was obviously creating a very toxic atmosphere. The fan base was very, very much divided and very... Um, on super on nerves right um fan cam channels were really dire and negative and it does a really bad cloud hanging around the, the club in general so for sanchez to walk into that change room especially off the back of playing you know being what voted arsenal player of the year and all that sort of stuff and really being adored and loved by their fan base he came to united to kind of win trophies and he gets in a change room and he finds a team that's you know probably quality wise isn't there again to win trophies and just as people they weren't getting on at all and it continues it says after the first training session i realized that things weren't good and when i got home i asked my family and manager um can i break up the contract and go back to arsenal and they laughed about it but i really left there with more bad things going on than i didn't like so he made he, he they thought he was making a joke but he was being for real he says um we weren't united as a team the journalists will talk about knowing i would get upset even the ex-players didn't know anything about how it was going on, uh, the, how the things were going. Um, we would blame me. They would blame me, sorry. But a player sometimes need uh, for the team to be united, to be family, and we weren't, which is very true. Scapegoats are a standard thing in United, especially now during the post Serge Ferguson period. Everyone's looking for someone to blame, whether it's you know justified or not. So that's not surprising in that regard. Da, 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 da. It says, the match against... Um, West Ham, where I didn't get even dressed, didn't change. And that never happened to me, to me before. It was really upsetting. It could be that I was one of the best in the top five Premier League five months ago, but now I wasn't even playing. And after that, I got home and I'm really upset and sad. And the next day, I trained double time. That's how, how I'm going to do my best to focus on football. And I guess that's the only part of it that's annoying about the whole quote is that he doesn't really take any acknowledgement of his poor levels. Maybe in his eyes, he could say, hey, I'm really tired of football and I trained really hard because when he was here, he was always on a bench or playing. He was never completely out of the squad. So obviously, he was doing what he needed to be done in training to kind of impress the manager to be selected for the team squad but it just didn't i don't know I, I i don't know what exactly happened but it just didn't it just didn't work out i guess in that regard but again i would have loved him to be a bit more introspective and to kind of admit his wrongs and you know kind of draw a line in the sand in that regard but hey probably not gonna happen if you're a footballer, you know, you probably all about you. So it's the next season, we got a new coach and I talked to him, which is Solskjaer, and I told him that I need the opportunity to leave. There was intern into as an option. And I needed a fresh air and he said there was no problem really, which again is a very um, counter argument to what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, where he said, oh, we need to get rid of the bad apples and everyone assumed it was Lukaku and Pogba. I mean, Lukaku and, um, yeah, Lukaku and Pogba at the time, isn't it? Right, it was definitely those two. So looking back on it now, look what's happened um he says here that i only have a uh, kind words for united uh for the opportunity i'm upset that things didn't work out or go the way that i wanted it if the team was more united and we were more of like family if everything was more positive i think we would have achieved much better things i'm telling all this because i have learned from this as a player as a person first getting united and i'm sad because i would have liked to win everything and make the fans happy which is nice enough to way to end it but again lack of accountability for his level of performance is not really the lick 
Um, but again, I'm glad it's kind of everyone sort of amicably moved on. But if anything, like I said previously, I think it has ex- exposed some glaring holes in, in our infrastructure as a club at United. We're clearly in a place where, you know, we're essentially having to rely on the manager being able to buy good players, right? There's no clear identity that we have. We're not recruiting a certain type of player or trying to play a certain type of way. It all just feels a little bit slapdashery, which might be a, his thing in, if you're social, but in terms of the modern game, you just need a bit more about you, right? You can't be substituting strikers on at the 8th minute, right? 85 minutes, sorry, if you're social. You can't be doing that. You have to kind of do things as a big coach. That's the place that I only worry about it. But again, um, you know, interesting. So, oh, sorry, the, the social interest. That's the point. That's the point I'm about to make. It goes to show that whatever social said about getting rid of the bad apples isn't true because obviously he didn't sell Lukaku or Sanchez. They both asked to leave, which kind of maybe says a lot more about our team or our infrastructure as a label or maybe as a John Wave, maybe than it does about the club. But yeah, that was that one. <laughs> 